Hey everyone, Majoribred here. Pokemon Black with only one Audino was really fun. Let's follow that up with a fun team run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team of only version exclusives? You know what a version exclusive is, right? It's the Pokemon that can only be normally caught in one version of Pokemon, but not the other. Red, Blue, and Yellow all have version exclusives, but for the sake of these videos, I'm not counting it as an exclusive if it's in both Red and Blue, but not Yellow. We're just using the red and blue lists to make our list of Pokemon that we can catch a little bit smaller. So our exclusives are Ekans, Oddish, Mankey, Growlithe, Scyther, and Electabuzz. Hey, that's enough to make a full team! This is gonna be a fun one. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. Obviously we can win, I'm just excited to see how we do it with such a random team. I'm calling it now, either Electabuzz or Scyther will be our MVP. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use version exclusives. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Bulbasaur with Oddish so that we can do the whole run with it. I decided to start with Oddish because it's going to be good against the first two gyms, so it seems like the most sensible Pokemon to start with. So first is Viridian Forest, and although I'm sure the Rock Gym at the end will be easy, the forest itself? Brutally slow. Oddish only knows Absorb until level 15 when it learns its first powder move. By level 19 it learns all three main powder moves, and it's all the way at level 24 that it learns Acid for its next attacking move. Basically, we're stuck with one insanely weak grass move for a good chunk of the start, and that's gonna be a problem, because just about everything in the forest is Bug-type and resists us. The Weedles are Bug and Poison, so they double resist us. I'd say it's not even worth fighting Weedles, but there's a required trainer fight with a Weedle that we have to do to get here. I thought I'd have to grind to get past him, but we actually won at level 7 thanks to how many times he used String Shot. It was incredibly close and we ran out of power points, but it's progress. We're level 8 now. Think we can beat the Rock Gym at level 8? Yup. In fact, we won at such a low level that we leveled up three times just by making his two Pokemon faint. Considering we hit level 8 just by beating that Weedle, and this was literally our next fight, that's incredible! <laughs> Alright, so we're really weak right now, and we've got to fight our way to the Rival and Water Gym. There's a lot of flying types in these early routes, so I really can't wait until I learn Acid, just so I have something that isn't Grass-type to use. Genuinely, early game trainers right now are challenging. This is rare! I couldn't even beat the first trainer until I grinded a bit. Even in Mount Moon, I was getting stuck on trainers with Zubat because we did so little damage to them, and Leech Life did so much to us. I just had to grind up on Geodudes and Pokemon outside of Mount Moon until Oddish evolved into Gloom just so that we could beat a Zubat. Although that delays us getting Acid until level 28. I figure once we get to Cerulean, we'll do the Water Gym first, but before that even, I have to pick up our first new Pokemon. That's right before Cerulean. Let's get over there. On our way, though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. There we go. Just outside town, I caught Ekans. It's a pretty cool Pokemon that I really rarely get to use. It's not insanely strong or anything, and its moveset is mostly very basic in this game, but it evolves at level 22, so it gets strong pretty early in the game. I figure it might end up taking over as our main Pokemon for fighting random trainers once we level it up a little bit. Hey, wish me luck in the Water Gym! By the time we finally get through Mount Moon and make it to the Water Gym, we're level 23 with a Gloom. So like, yeah, Absorb sucks, but there's nothing they could have done to me. I just have to hold out hope that the Rival is easy. Okay, so the Rival fight starts great with me just spamming Sleep Powder and Absorb. Don't get me wrong, we're hardly doing any damage at all, but we're staying pretty healthy so it's not too bad. He can get us with Sand Attack and we can't stop it, but this is a team run so the moment he went down I just sent an Ekans to take out Abra. Switching removes stat debuffs, so I was able to switch back to Gloom to easily take out Rattata. Last was Charmander, but we just kept putting it to sleep and hitting Absorb until we won. No problem at all! Thank god for Gen 1 sleep being so crazy strong. Now that we're on the road again, it's time to get a new Pokemon for the team. I went ahead and caught Mankey, one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. 
Now, it can't learn any particularly good fighting moves in this game, mostly because Gen 1 just had an awful selection of fighting moves. The strongest one he can learn is Submission, which is 80 power, 80 accuracy, with recoil. I, I can't think of, like, any reason why you'd want to use Submission in this game, it's terrible. Would you believe it if I said that Karate Chop was normal type in this game? I routinely forget that because it's just so absurd. It's it, karate's in the name! Still, I'm sure we can make use of this guy in the long run. Maybe I'll get him some levels in the SSN and see how the rival fight goes. Well, the fight goes pretty well, but it's only because Gloom finally knows Acid and thus can do a move that isn't awful against like half the Pokemon that we run into. Gloom did actually end up fainting to Charmeleon at the end, but we had already done so much damage that Mankey was able to finish it off. Hey, we got Karate Chop! Maybe now Mankey will be able to grind on its own a little bit. And as usual, the Electric Gym was a breeze. I tried getting a bit more experience on Ekans since we've got it so close to evolving, but it's pretty much useless right now when it's slower than its opponent, so Gloom had to do most of the heavy lifting. I figure as soon as Mankey and Ekans evolve, they're gonna get a lot more use. Hey, at least Rock Tunnel should be easy since we have a grass move. That's nice. So through switch training, I have Ekans incredibly close to evolving, and should be able to evolve it before the next major fight easily, although Mankey is still lagging behind a bit. There's no experience share in this game, just experience all, and that item both takes forever to get and is literally worse than not even having it. So I'm just sticking to switch training. It's slow, but at least it reliably gets us experience. Hey, at least we get to evolve these things, and we're catching new Pokémon soon. The team's growing fast. Now that we're in Celadon, we can get new Pokémon. First, I catch Growlithe outside of town. Now, we can evolve this into Arcanine whenever we want, because we can just go buy a Firestone at the store, but it stops learning level up moves once we evolve it, so I'm gonna hold off until it learns more moves that I want. Really, I just want to get it to level 50 to get Flamethrower, although that's a long time to level up Growlithe to get its only good move. I might just teach him Fire Blast and evolve him early, who knows. Still, great Pokémon to have in the long run. I guess I could evolve Gloom as well, although I want to wait until we get Petal Dance. It's not great in this game, but it's one of our better choices for grass moves. I also pick up the coin case and convert what I can to buy a Scyther, but that's 5,500 coins, so it's going to be a long time before I can afford that. Normally in solo Gen 1 runs, it takes until about after Sylph Co. before I could afford something like that, if I'm lucky. And if I was good about making sure I never black out, for sure. I think you lose half your money in this game when you black out. There's a reason why I usually just save before fights and reload if I black out, because that's a lot of money to lose. Maybe I'll have to fight extra trainers on routes I don't normally go to just for the money. Alright, let's take out Giovanni. Yeah, he was a total breeze. It doesn't really take much to beat Giovanni in this fight, so just having a grass move made it pretty easy. That said, I'm for sure going to have to grind up Growlithe more before he's useful in the Grass Gym. So I think I'm going to do the Pokémon Tower Rival fight first instead. After grinding Growlithe for a little while, I went after our rival. Pidgeotto was first, and I tried to fight it with Growlithe for a bit, but we weren't doing much. And Sand Attack ruined our accuracy instantly, so I had to send an Arbok to do most of the fighting. We got crit, lost more health than I'd like to, but at least it went down and we learned Glare. Execute was next, and Growlithe did a much better job of taking it out. We lost some health to Barrage, but it only got us to half health, so that's not too bad. I didn't have a great answer for Water Onyx, so I sent in Gloom to put it to sleep. Absorb did just about nothing, so I had to use Acid instead. Water Onyx's Dragon Rage was really dangerous, and we ended up losing most of our health to it before we took him down. Second from last is Kadabra, who is good against most of our team, so I just sent in Growlithe to use Bite just to end up getting confused off confusion, then hitting ourselves twice in a row to take ourselves out. Well, that was crazy unlucky. Mankey gets one-shot by a critical confusion next, so next is Arbok. Bite was also a one-shot, but he just used Teleport, so we finished him off on the next round. Last is Charmeleon, but instantly we crit our first Bite, so we two-shot him easily. Hey, you know what sucks? Pokemon Tower, when all you've got is Growlithe using Ember and Gloom with not very effective poison and grass moves. Well, they're confusing you, paralyzing you, and have Nightshade. 
We had to heal after most fights. The worst part is we didn't even get much experience, since it would have been a waste of time to fight extra ghosts in here when we're so useless against them. I'm gonna try and get some experience near Fuchsia City and then fly back and try the Grass Gym. Right away I have Arbok Paralyze Victory Bell, then I spam it with a wrap so that it has nearly no chance of fighting back. Yeah, I'm not messing around. Erica likes to play dirty with effect moves and rap spam, so I beat her to the punch. It took forever and we did take a hit, but we obviously knocked it out. I sent in Growlithe to take out Tangela really easily, and last was Vileplume. Petal Dance did pretty decent damage to us considering we're fire type, but our Ember is doing decent damage too. We took him out thanks to one of our Embers being a crit, but even if we fainted, I'm sure the rest of the team would have finished it off. Next is the Poison Gym. For the first coughing, I just bite it down with Arbok. He's a way higher level than us, but we only took decent damage thanks to him using X Attack, which Koga loves to spam. Muck is much tankier and uses two X Attacks right away, so naturally, he hits incredibly hard with Sludge despite us resisting it. We actually only took him out thanks to him spamming Disable for some reason. The second coughing nearly managed to take out Arbok, but he wasted slightly too much time so we just hardly hung on. For the wheezing, I sent in Gloom. Now I was kind of just hoping he'd blow up, but until then, the plan was to put him to sleep and spam Acid, hoping that it will eventually lower his defense enough to make him lose. Naturally, he spams X attack, and our sleep powder luck isn't always the best, but at least we're hitting him. It took tons of hits before we got him to lose any defense, and it hardly made a difference once it did happen. But thanks to him just spamming stuff like Toxic when he'd wake up, he usually didn't do much. Eventually, he used Sludge, and of course it took us out since he used like three X attacks. I had to send in Growlithe, who almost fainted it, but got taken out quickly. In the end, I had to send in our 7 health Arbok to finish it off with Bite. Considering Mankey is only level 22 and for sure wouldn't finish it off, that was incredibly close. Hey, now that we can use Seraph outside of battle, we can get to the power plant and catch Electabuzz. I went ahead and taught it Thunderbolt with the TM right away, since it's an awesome move on an awesome Pokemon. We've had just about no type variety this whole run, so finally getting electric moves is going to help us out a lot. I also overhauled our move set a bit by putting Body Slam and Dig on Mankey. Last, I grabbed the Rock Slide TM for Arbok. No, I don't know why Arbok can learn Rock Slide, but I mean it's useful. <laughs> now let's try the Fire Gym early and try and get Fire Blast. Alright, Fire Gym! Right away, our massively underleveled Primeape takes out Growlithe without taking damage thanks to Blaine not knowing what a Pokemon battle is, but second is Ponyta whose stomps did a ton of damage. We still took it out fast though. Rapidash is third and it's much tougher, so I sent in Arbok to use Rock Slide. Rapidash just spammed Tail Whip, so I thought we were in the clear, but we ended up taking a nasty stomp. We took it out, but we got really banged up. Last is RK9, and it literally just swept our whole team with Fire Blast and Takedown. Okay, well, it's one of the strongest Pokemon in the game, hitting us with a really strong move while being a way higher level than us. Maybe I should do the Silphco rival fight first instead. Right away, Thunderbolt works great against Pidgeot. We lost some accuracy, but we never took any damage. I switched to Growlithe for Execute. Right away, we burned him with Ember, got Leech seeded, so I switched into Gloom to use Acid. This is like one of the three or four Pokemon in the game that Poison is super effective against. I think it's just like Tangela, Execute, Caterpie, Scyther, and like the evolutions of them. Anyway, it went down fast, and next was Water Onyx, who of course was a one-shot with Thunderbolt. Alakazam's next, and he's always terrifying. There's no great answer for him, so I sent in Growlithe first, just to get nearly one-shot by Confusion and do very little damage with Bite. We hit a few times thanks to him wasting turns, but then he started spamming Recover, so this really isn't working. Once we went down, I sent in Electabuzz. Thunderbolt did alright damage, but he really could have still beaten us if he just, uh you know, didn't spam disable. Last is Charizard, but he's part flying type, so I just hit Thunderbolt twice for the win. Hey, that really wasn't too bad. Right after, Giovanni starts with Nidoran, so I just gave it the beatdown with Arbok, but a critical horn attack really did mess us up. Kangaskhan did some really good damage to Electabuzz thanks to a critical comet punch, but it still went down in a few hits. And Rhyhorn was obviously a cakewalk with Absorb. 
Last was his Nido Queen, who I tried to fight with Gloom for a little while before realizing that nothing I did did any serious damage to her. So I just sent in our underleveled Primeape to spam Dig, and that did the trick. Man, we're on a roll! Time for the Psychic Gym. Right away, we Thunderbolt Kadabra for almost half of his health as he fully heals back up with a recover. Thankfully, right after he fails Disable, then hits Psybeam, so he didn't heal forever. We did lose half our health, though. Mr. Mime just used Barrier before going down, so no threat here. And Venomoth is not Flying-type, and I remembered that for once, so I used Psychic twice to take it out. I'm so happy a Stun Spore didn't work, that would've sucked. Last is Alakazam, and we weren't doing much damage, but he used Reflect two times in a row at the start. That's when he hit Psybeam to take us out while he was in red health. I sent an Arbok to finish him off as he used Psywave to deal 5 damage to us. Hilariously enough though, we still didn't take him out thanks to his Reflect. Then he used Psywave again and managed to do even less damage, giving us a chance to finish him off. Watching Psywave do 5 damage on the first try and then 4 damage on the next is just a... Uh, that's beautiful. That, that's a piece of art right there. Hey, the Fire Gym is actually easy this time. I bet he still could have won if he just spammed stuff like Stomp and Take Down the whole fight, but he blamed it and used Roar a bunch of times so we could just dig and body slam the whole fight. Easy win, and that gets us Fire Blast. Last for the gyms is the Ground Gym. Yeah, we didn't take a single hit the entire gym. I'm sure that doesn't exactly shock you, but everything went down to either Dig or Petal Dance. Time for the second from last rival fight. Right away, Pidgeot is a one-shot with a critical Thunderbolt, and Rhyhorn is of course a one-shot with Petal Dance. I sent an Arbok to Paralyze Execute just to get paralyzed in return. We quickly got seated, so I had to switch out, but Vileplume has Acid, so we took it out quickly. Water Onyx was a one-shot with Thunderbolt, like usual, and it's time for the ever-terrifying Alakazam. He's faster than us, and instantly nearly one-shots us with Psychic, but at least our first Thunderbolt managed to paralyze him. Second round he used Reflect, and on the third he was fully paralyzed, so he managed to take him out. Last is Charizard, who's faster than us, and took out Electabuzz. That's bad, he was our only super effective guy against him. I sent in our Growlithe that's like half his level and got some Leers in before he got slashed down, then I sent in Arbok to Glare. That's when Charizard used Rage, locking him into that for the rest of the fight. Thanks to that, we had time to hit a couple of Rock Slides for the win. Man, I can't believe how far we've gotten at such a low level. I mean, our entire team are lower levels than the Elite Four. Our highest level is 40, and their lowest level is 53. So uh, it doesn't really look like we can win right now. Plus, we still don't have the money for Scyther, although we're really close. I could use rare candies to try and get my team to a reasonable level, but then we'd get no stat experience from that. Well, in fairness, that would actually make the challenge more challenging. Considering we nearly have a full team, it wouldn't be possible for me to max out the stat experience on all of them during this challenge. It's a lot slower to max out stat experience in Gen 1 and 2 than it is to max out effort values in the games after that. I'm thinking I'm going to overhaul every moveset I can, then use rare candies to bring everyone who's below level 40 to level 40. It's still an entire 13 levels lower than the lowest level Pokemon that will fight the entire Elite Four, but it'll save me at least an hour or two on grinding them to level 40. Also, I'm gonna play the slots to get coins for Scyther, because I think we only need like 300 more coins anyway. Okay, now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Our team is still super weak compared to the Elite Four, but I do think we stand a chance. Our types are lopsided and kind of weird, but we actually do have a reasonably wide variety of decent moves. Gen 1 doesn't really give you a ton of options when it comes to movesets, but I think we've made it work. Between Lance having no idea how to fight poison types, and Agatha not knowing how any of her own moves work, I figure I can at least make it to my rival. You know, if Lorelai isn't too bad. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelai. Right away, Thunderbolt is doing pretty well against Dugong despite us being an entire 14 levels lower than her. Three hits takes it out, and we didn't get hit once. Cloyster obviously went down fast since it's only a physical tank, although its Aurora Beam did a ton of damage to us. Slowbro had me worried because of how broken Amnesia is in Gen 1, but we crit it right away and she used a super potion, so we just took it out before it did a single move. Jinx was a lot scarier though. It's fast and hits really hard. I sent in Growlithe to fire blast it down. It did great damage, but as soon as we took an Ice Punch, we went down fast. 
Arbok tried to come in and finish it, just to get one shot from full health from a critical ice punch. Thankfully against Primeape, she just used Double Slap so we could Body Slam her to paralyze her, then Body Slam her again to finish her off. Last was Lapras, and this absolute beast is the entire second half of the fight. One by one, I threw my entire team at her, and we nearly won! We were probably one hit from taking her out, but her OP Gen 1 Blizzard spam was just too much for us. Alright, well, most of her team is 15 levels higher than us. Let's get up to level 45 instead of 40, and I bet we can win. Next try, and the fight goes more or less the same until Jinx, who took out multiple of our Pokémon because she hits so, so hard! This time, once we got to Lapras, though, we paralyzed her early with Body Slam. We still took tons of damage, and she still took out some of our Pokémon, but we had her paralyzed, and Electabuzz was still alive, so I could just send him in and finish her off. Fun fact, I then had to do this fight again because I forgot to save and accidentally talked to Blaine before healing. <laughs> In like four years of doing these challenges, I don't think I've ever done that before. Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. This one was super easy though, we only took one hit the whole fight, and it was from an Onyx using Slam. I love that Slam is so useless, and Onyx has such low attack, that despite it having a massive level lead on us, it hardly did anything at all. I feel like I've brought this up before, but did you know that Onyx has the same base attack as a Pidgey? It's abysmal. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Psychic isn't doing great damage to Gengar, and we got put to sleep on the first round, but thankfully we woke up before Dream Eater and managed to get a few hits on her to take her out. For Golbat, we just two-shot it with Thunderbolt as she doesn't attack due to using a Super Potion, and for Haunter, I just kept using Psychic as he used Dream Eater while I was awake. I tried to have a mirror match against Arbok for fun. We got paralyzed, but hit a huge earthquake in the process. Right away, she just switched to Gengar, who kept using Dream Eater while we were awake. We crit an Earthquake to take it down, then kept using Earthquake to take out Arbok when it came back in. Weird as usual, but a clean fight. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Water Onyx is of course a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and second is Dragonair. Now, I have zero worries about the Dragon types, since I can just have Arbok spam Rock Slide and Earthquake to take them down. We don't do much damage, but they just spam Agility since we're Poison types, so it wasn't a problem. Same goes for the second Dragonair, although I took that one out with Primeape, because, you know, Psychic's also good against it. Aerodactyl probably could have hit us really hard if he didn't miss all of his moves. Last is Dragonite, and he can't hit us while we use Poison and Fighting types since he'll spam Agility. But the problem is he also has Barrier, and that's Psychic too, so he maxes out his defenses early. Because of that, I ended up having a super long fight with him, where I was just swapping in Pokémon and trying to figure out how to eventually take him down. The best thing I could do was paralyzing him and sending an Electabuzz to spam Thunderbolt, but one Hyper Beam took us out. We never were in any real danger, since he can't take out most of our team, but about 75% of this fight was just slowly chipping down a Dragonite who spammed Barrier. What a weird problem to have. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. Right away we Thunderbolt twice to take down Pidgeot, as they only hit us with an incredibly weak wing attack, but second is Alakazam. I sent in Scyther first. Obviously, he could one-shot most of our team, so we just have to hope he uses bad moves. Right away, he uses Reflect, but we crit Slash to bypass it. That's what I was hoping for. Problem is, he one-shots us with Psychic, so we did a ton of damage, but we went down. Primeape was able to paralyze him with a Body Slam, though, giving us the speed advantage to crit with a Karate Chop, bypassing Reflect. That wasn't too bad. Out to Vile Plume to easily one-shot Rhydon, and next is Executor, so I sent in Growlithe to use Fire Blast. I love that it's the last fight of the game and I'm still using an unevolved Growlithe, because he's five levels from getting Flamethrower. Anyway, Barrage was really messing us up, and Stomp took us to three health. The Fire Blasts did amazing damage and nearly took him out, but we did end up fainting. That's alright, Arbok easily finished it off. Water Onyx was next, and it survived Thunderbolt with a Sliver to one-shot Electabuzz with Hyper Beam. That's bad, Electabuzz was my answer for Charizard! I sent in Primeape to finish off Water Onyx with Seismic Toss. Last was Charizard, and right away we get caught in Fire Spin for ages. It doesn't take long though before he switches to using Rage. Now this is Gen 1 Rage, so it's weak, but every time we hit him and he survives, he gains attack. 
but he's locked into only doing rage for the rest of the fight. I ended up sending the scraps of my team in one by one to whittle him down. When Primeape went down, I sent in Vileplume to spam Acid for the defense drops, but the problem is, his attack raises every time we hit him. Not only that, but he crits often, so even the weaker early rages do a decent amount of damage. It took a combo of poison damage and defense drops to do it, but eventually, we got a hard-fought victory. Alright, I'm just gonna say it now, this is one of the most fun challenges I have ever done. Like, I enjoy the thematic team runs in general, but this was super fun! Without a doubt, I recommend that you try this if this seemed interesting to you, because it was really fun using this weird and lopsided team of otherwise kind of decent Pokémon and trying to get through the game with it. I really hope you guys like that run. The next challenge will be up next Saturday, like usual, with Fallout New Vegas with only explosives. I've been wanting to do that run for, like, years now. It's gonna be such silly fun, I'm excited. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time, but if you listened to last week's outro, you already know what to expect here. It is currently, let me check the date, January 21st, which is a Sunday, 2024, which means uh, my wife is flying home from France in... Oh my god, a little under 48 hours from now. Uh, at least she'll be in the country in under 48 hours. Lord only knows if she'll be out of the airport. Probably not. Okay, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> not here. But uh, she'll at least be in the country. So, uh, I just did this voiceover, and now I'm going to edit the whole video really quick so that I don't have to edit the video on the week that she comes home. Yay! Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.